Hello, today I'm going to review the Volantix RC 6 channel simulator. It's a USB uh, RC controller simulator and uh, you use it to learn how to fly an RC model airplane. It comes with uh, flight simulation software as well which will help you get oriented with uh, flying an RC airplane. It's not the same as flying a real plane in the sense that uh, you're not in, <laughs> in a real plane, you're in the plane. And with an RC plane you need to understand the dynamics of uh, control when the plane is uh, going away from you, when it's flying upside down, and how that all works with the controller. This uh, little controller comes with a free software called FMS. It comes on a little mi micro CD. Uh, it's okay software, but it doesn't really work well in a Windows 7 or Vista. Uh, so uh, I'll show you a few other flight simulators I use that uh, are, are a little better for this purpose. Okay, so let's get, take it out of the box here quickly. Comes in a well packaged in a styrofoam container. It's reasonably priced as well. It's, I believe it's under twenty dollars. Okay, and there's the controller with the uh, little CD, uh, FMS CD, flight simulator. Um, like I said, if you're using an XP. It'll work just great, but if you're using Windows 7, pff, forget it. It's going to be a real pain. Uh, I will show you how, to, how it works in Windows 7 in a minute so you can see what the issues are. Uh, and you can decide whether you want to fix that or not. I'm not going into that. Okay, so here we go. We'll take it out of the packaging. And you'll see that it's six channels, which means that you have up and down. That's one channel. Left and right, that's another channel. Uh, throttle. That's another channel. Rudder, another channel, so that's four. And two little switches here, which you can use for either flaps or uh, landing gear or whatever you choose to uh, use on the software. Okay? Comes with, uh, I would say, about a five foot long USB cord. Uh, if you look at the back, you'll see that there's a battery compartment. Not sure what that's for. Um, Considering that there's no terminals in this compartment at all, I don't even know why they put it there. Maybe at one time it needed batteries, or maybe they used this case for another uh, real controller. But it does not require batteries as it's powered by the USB cable. Uh, and, and, you know, regardless, you can't put any in there that would work anyhow, because there's no terminals. It also has this little hook here, which uh, will allow you to uh, simulate real reality where you have a strap that holds onto your neck so that, you know, it'll hold on to your RC controller while you're using it. Um, they're fairly easy controls. They're quite light. Uh, and I will show you them uh, working on a, a remote control uh, software inside my computer next. All right, I'll begin here by, install, by first installing the uh, Volantix uh, RC USB controller into my computer and all it takes really is plug the USB cable in and it just happens. Uh, I'm using Windows 7 64-bit by the way. All right and as you can hear it just went it made a noise and it uh, it's basically it's installed the uh, RC controller already. Now next I'm going to show you the software that comes with this. Uh, it comes on the little CD so let's go and install that. I've got the CD in my uh, CD player or CD-ROM drive and I'm waiting for it to pop up here. There it is. Um, I'm going to say open and view the files. And in here you'll see that there's Chinese documentation uh, and there's also uh, English documentation. You can read that if you wish. I don't need to open that up for you. Uh, I'm going to show you how to install it. Just uh, double click on the FMS uh, directory. Go to bin. And in there you'll see FMS uh, disk beta 7.exe. Now this is not the most recent version of this software. Uh, but I'm going to assume that, uh, you know, just for the sake of product uh, highlight which I'm doing on this uh, RC controller this is what you're going to install. I'll show you different uh, radio control simulations that you can install for free 
instead of this one. And uh, the updated version of this is also available for free on the internet. So let's just first double click that. Okay, and my user account control wants to ask me for permissions. You probably don't see that, but I'm just going to click on yes to that question. And you get English, uh, German, and Russian. Of course, we're going with English. Agree to the terms and conditions. Click next. Go to the default location. Next. And you'll see here shortly why I don't like using the software on this computer. Uh, it's got uh, video issues and uh, many people run into this. I have an NVIDIA card. Maybe you won't. Uh, I would say try it to find out. Okay. And there, I'm not sure whether my video software is going to pick this up or not, but uh, I get a lot of flashing going on. I'm going to full size the screen and the only way to fix this is to downgrade the graphics uh, settings so take it you have to take textures off so if you take textures off that's it it works but then you lose the runway you lose uh, the detail on the plane and so on which is kind of a bummer and uh, but regardless this is how it works in Windows 7 and in XP this works a lot better actually it works exactly as it's supposed to which leads me to believe that this software was actually created for Windows XP. Okay, first thing you need to do is go to controls, analog control, choose your joystick interface here, and then mapping and calibration. And when you move your controls, you'll see that these things change, right? Now you only have a six channel input, so only six of these controls will actually change. So, uh, Let's go to, well, first of all, let's see if rudder is what we want. Okay, when I, when I move what I call the rudder, that's the left joystick, left or right, and that's what I want the rudder to be, that moves number two. Okay, so first off, the rudder needs to be changed here. So you change it from channel one to channel two. And then let's try the throttle, which is the left joystick up and down. And that's number three. So let's change that over here from four to three. Then we want to use the right joystick, which gives us two more axes. Uh, so up and down or elevator is number one. So we need to change the elevator to number one. And uh, yaw or roll sorry is number seven sorry number four and that's left to right on the right joystick so here we go and that that would be controlled by the aileron so you need to change the aileron to number four and i found that i'm gonna have to inverse these uh, uh settings to allow it to uh work correctly and i'll show you why that, that is in a second but first, let's just continue with the calibration. The tail and, and uh, Nick, you don't need to set any of these. You know, the two switches are five and six, and you can put them wherever you'd like. So let's hit calibrate here. Move the stick several times in a circle until the range is adapted. So you can check each one here. That's the throttle. And let's go with the rudder. That's the uh, left joystick, left and right. Uh, let's go with elevator. And uh, we're going to go with aileron now, number four. And rudder, number two. Okay, so... I like to center these up here when, when, when I'm done doing that. Uh, oh, I forgot. Make sure you switch through the switches. 
they're, they're either 100% on or 100% off. So once we're done that, uh, I put the, circ the uh, sticks as far into the center as I can and click next. Center all sticks, it says, and finish calibration. Okay, finish. Now, we'll go back to the simulation and okay. All right, so even though I have the, the engine off at this moment, um, it, it's still showing the propeller is spinning. But you can hear that. Okay. And my ailerons aren't working correctly because when I pitch to the right, it, it, the plane shifts to the left. And as you can see, it gets pretty small pretty quickly. So let's go to simulation here and pause it for a second. And we'll go to controls, analog controls, joystick mapping and calibration. Well, then we just do an inverse on the aileron and hit OK. And then we check the rest of our controls. Actually here you want to go to view, I do anyway, and click on the auto zoom. And then we'll go back to initial to initialize here. Obviously I'm having a problem here. I'm paused. Yes, I'm paused. And the control surfaces unfortunately don't move when I move my joysticks. That's another problem I have with this simulation. So anyways, let's get it up in the air. As you can see, I, I, I'm staying closer to it now. And the controls work pretty good, actually pretty well. Uh, my rudders also needs to be inversed. Okay, so you get the idea. This is pretty good simulation, but I, I don't, I, sh I shouldn't say pretty good. It, it's an okay simulation in Windows 7. It's much better in XP when you get full resolution and everything works as it should. But I'm sure there's a workaround in Windows 7 for this issue, but it's not my issue. I don't really care. Uh, there's, I have several other simulations I use, which are I think are better. Okay, so let's download and install the other simulations. I'll put the links for all of these in uh, the description. Now, the latest one I downloaded was RC Desk Pilot, which is pretty good. I'll show you that next. I, I, you know, I'm sure you know how to download and install a, a, a piece of software. Make sure you have the prerequisites, which are uh, DirectX and Microsoft.net net, network here. So if you don't have them, or don't know whether you have them or not, just download them here and install them. So I'll go show you this program now. And that's RC Desk Pilot. I'm leaving the best program for last so you can see why I like it the most. Okay, so we're going to go to the full, full screen this. And you've had the, you know, the promotional stuff. Uh, we can click on demo here. Watch the demo for a second. As you can see, it's got several views. It's got nice 3D rendering. You know, but I, I don't find these views helpful to fl flying an RC plane, which is the reason I bought the controller. I mean, it's fun to fly this way, but it's it's not practical for learning how to fly an RC plane, which is why I actually bought the, the controller. If you didn't buy it for that reason, well, hey, use it any way you like. So I'm going to hit escape on that. And we're going to go start. Uh, I had the throttle on. And as you can see, there's no zoom enabled right now. So uh, we're going to hit the auto zoom over here. There we get we get closer to the plane automatically. Um, let's go into the menu and under controls you'll need to calibrate it here. I already have, but the process is more or less the same either way. Um,
I see my number six is a little off to the to the right, and six is uh, in this case the roll. So I'm not really worried about it here, but I guess we could calibrate it here. Let's go through the calibration process. This one's a little different. PPM is your controller, and the status is okay. So we go to uh, and go to advanced um, just to see if there's any other controllers you're using, but obviously we're not so we hit okay here I just wanted to show you that click on properties and you'll see there's your z-axis Z your left and right up and down so on and so forth all your axes are, are here okay all right and hit okay on that and okay and back to the menu and it said to calibrate it to go to the settings page well we're on this is the setting page so back to sim here back to let's hit reset here there we're back to the beginning all right and then back to controls again Calibrate. You go to settings. Back to calibrate. Next. It's kind of round the way, roundabout way of going to get to your to your settings. But there, I'm just showing you how to do that. Okay, so we're doing that, moving the controller in complete circles, both controllers, and the switches as well, so it knows. Okay, then click next, and it says leave it centered, so I'm going to do that. Next. Z axis is the throttle on this case in this case. X rotation is the right switch. Y rotation is the left switch. Z rotation is the roll. And finish. And then we're just gonna hit apply. And okay. And we'll go back to the game. Or the simulation, I should say. And as you can see, I have full control of that aircraft, router. I find this a much better simulation than the other. There we go. And good enough for now. I'm going to load a different plane here. Just so you know that there are different aircraft. And let's see what we have. We've got about seven or eight different ones. Um, you, have, you, have, you also have helicopters as well, which is great. There's your aircraft. I like this personally like this airplane because it has flaps number one and a retractable gear and it shows you a couple things on, on the sim. Okay, so let's take the gear up. There we go. Let's put the flaps down. And man put the gear up. And that's what happens when you crash, crash land it. <laughs> There's the gear down. So, you get the picture. You have full control on this aircraft, which is excellent. Okay. Now, this is a fun program. The next program I'm going to show you is called Clearview SE. 
and uh, it's right here. I have it installed already. I will give you the download links for all the software. It's all free. And this is my favorite software because it's the most realistic feeling to me. Okay, first of all, on any of these RC programs, first thing you should do is the controller setup. So here you go, settings, and there's your controller setup. Of course, mine is already done. Of course, this is your choices. Um, we're going with the PPM, which is your, which is what this controller shows up as. Okay, so enable stick auto centering when model is reset to initial position, and we're going to hit uh, calibrate here. Center all the sticks, and you can tell whether you're centered or not by the uh, uh, the axis indicators in the, in the uh, channel of raw data there. Okay, you can go by that. Hit OK. All right. Sticks in all directions. I'll do that. Switches. Okay. I put the Z axis back to the center. The throttle does not the throttle does not auto center, which is a good thing. Okay, here we're gonna hit accept. And let's load an airplane. Well you have a limited set of planes. Uh, that's the only limitation on this free software. If you want more planes, you need to purchase them. I hear they're nominal, not a big deal. Uh, but personally, I just love the uh, default airplane that it, this comes with. It comes with an RC car, a helicopter, uh, and others as well. So let's uh, put this into the air. And as you can see, the the the, the uh, Background's fairly realistic, and when you crash, you crash. <laughs> Pieces go flying everywhere, and you get the idea. Uh, as well as when you're taking off, you can see it actually has, it takes into account the texture of the ground, which, is, you know, seems quite real to me. Um, after each crash, it has to reset the program, so that takes a little bit. Not a big deal. Okay, and... Let me uh, taxi this towards, there we go. Lots of nice features on this program, and I'll show you a few others here. Okay, notice the ailerons. They actually respond to your controls. Isn't that nice? The elevators as well. Rudder as well. And you can see it happening on the screen. This is what makes me this my favorite software. It seems to be the most realistic, and it'll teach you a lot of things, including how to handle the fact that the controls are inverted when they fly when the plane's flying towards you. Okay, obviously I'm <laughs> not doing great at this point, but I'm just showing you this simulation so you know how this uh, controller works. Controller's wonderful. Software's fun. And after I get a real good handle on being able to, to fly this uh, simulation, I will go out and purchase a radio control model to play with for real. I also want this for my daughter as well so that she can learn how to fly this and understand it and uh, fly the real thing. I think it would be a lot of fun for her. All right. Thank you for your patience today and thanks for watching. Uh, happy flying.